weekend we have come to the historic and beautiful Royal Borough of Windsor with the castle behind me for the world famous Windsor Championship Dog Show. Welcome to Around the Dog World. Today you join us at beautiful Home Park in Windsor. Now, by the time you see this, one of the biggest events in our lifetime will have hit London, the 2012 Olympic Games. And you'll have seen 73 Olympic gold medals awarded. Hopefully, some of those will go to Great Britain. But over the next four days here at Windsor, we will see 165 best of breeds judged. And on the Sunday, the ultimate accolade, best in show. Now, the first day of Windsor sees the working and pastoral breeds being judged. But, as per usual, we're going to take a look back at some of the shows we've missed. Today I'm joined by Pam Blay. Now, Pam, last time out at Southern Counties, we mentioned the St Bernard that went best in show. And then at Three Counties, we actually saw another high-profile breed awarded top honour. Yeah, that's true. That's the one that you saw win the group at Southern Counties who are a Cantonal. He's a grandson of the best in show from Crafts, who now has 20 cc's, got the reserve best in show at Welsh Kennel Club, and um, is on a good roll at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see if we see him at this glorious show too. Absolutely, and of course the toy breeds actually featured well the week after. We saw another toy breed take best in show at Border Union. One of the smallest dogs, the Smooth Coat Chihuahua, owned by David Rees, champion Copy Mia Celebration, took best in show at Boulder Union in that terrible weather, so he did really well. He's got 28 cc's and four groups. He's top Chihuahua. We think there's been lots of Chihuahuas taking best in shows, but we think that's the first bitch to do so. Well, thank you very much, Pam. Now, the eagle-eared of you may remember from the last programme that we said we'd be out again at Blackpool. However, this year's Blackpool Championship show had to be abandoned after just one day due to terrible weather conditions. I spoke to the secretary, Steve Hall, after the decision was made to call the show off. Steve, you must be pretty devastated. Uh, yeah. yeah, after all the, the, the work we put in and the ground was looking fabulous and then the rain came at 10 past seven and it never stopped. So this is, it, it destroys morale really in a way. Um, but you just got to pick yourself up and, and carry on. You, know, you just can't let it beat you. But yesterday, I think it did. At what point on the Friday did you realise the show might be in trouble? Um, really, the problem was it was the actual downpour. It never eased up. It didn't even come light rain. It was heavy rain all the time. We thought it would ease in the afternoon. And, and rings were getting wetter and wetter and muddier and muddier. And it became a point where I, I do sympathise with these exhibitors because at the end of the day, I'm an exhibitor and we can't give them the show they want it. You can feel, I can feel the problem, but I just feel that it's, it, we couldn't continue. It was just so wet and there's a point where you say it's now cut off time and, and, and to be fair to everybody. So <clears throat> we had to think, well, maybe, we, maybe it's a possibility, but we didn't make a decision until later in the evening when everybody had gone and the car parts were cleared and we could have a good look at the situation. I did actually go across to another field across the road, which we don't own, but we, we, we could possibly borrow it off a farmer. And he has a crop on the grass, two foot high. I, I tried to buy the crop off him so we could get the cars on and he wouldn't sell it. So that was my, made the decision. That is it. We've, we've nowhere to park anybody safely. So we had to abandon. I don't think we get people to come on the car park, which was a deluge of water and mud. You'd have to pull them on. We'd have queues back to the M6. People's tempers will be flared, and we've got pet people coming, and we don't want to associate dog show people with all this bad publicity with people losing the rag. Well, you don't want that, do you? It's supposed to be fun. It's, a dog, it's only a dog show. And have you had anyone turn up this morning? Three as I know. And I think some of them are local. So I thought that was marvellous. I expected a queue of all aggravated people, but good old Facebook. So, Steve, is there anything that you've learned from this weekend? Uh, don't have a dog show on a wet weekend. Oh, <laughs> well, that uh, pretty much sums it up, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, we'll let you go. Uh, commiserations to you and your committee and uh, let you get on with the clean-up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Really unfortunate for Blackpool to have such bad weather. That a show needed to be cancelled is very rare and to have it happen to the same show twice in the space of four years is just awful. However, we're here to see Windsor and first in the main ring is Working and Pastoral Group, judged today by Michael Quinney. the winner of the working group here at Windsor 2012 is the Doberman, Ozzy. And this is Sue Mycroft who is handling and is co-owner because there's quite a lot of owners on Ozzy. <laughs> Ozzy's had a fantastic sort of 12, 18 months, hasn't he? Fantastic, about three years really, yes. That was uh, the 14th group today, uh, group one that is. He's, ov he's obviously had uh, 56 tickets to go with that, which is, having broken the record last year, is now well and truly flattened it, shall we say. Um, and he's just keeps going for us we were sort of semi-retiring but he likes doing it and we do so we're back out <laughs> now while you were in there actually i caught your eye and you said oh i'm not so sure about today he doesn't really he wasn't too keen today is it because it, the, the heat did it get to him it just felt a bit sluggish but in actual fact because he's so on his toes and tends to sort of haul me around the ring sometimes because he's slightly less on the ball today it probably made him go a little sounder if anything now pam blay our expert for the few days at windsor um an interesting group um lots of breeds represented in there we had a lot of high profile breeds as well yeah, the great thing about that is they all went through and in fact the dog and the mastiff were both in there in the final shout and there was a Siberian Husky in there that particularly oh, caught your eye. I loved it. 35 cc's, nine years of age. Well, thank you very much, Pam. So we go straight back to the main ring for the winners of the Pastoral Group.
pastoral group here at Windsor 2012 on day one in a very hot and humid atmosphere was Tiff, the Australian Shepherd Dog, now handled by Angie Allen. Angie, you looked absolutely delighted. You shook the air with your fist. That was a good win for you. Oh, it's great. She's only 20 months old. That's the second group one. And with all the wins last year, I mean, it was top puppy, all breeds like third. This year is just like the icing on the cake and to do it under such um, a great all-rounder is absolutely fantastic and I know that he loves a good moving dog and I know that she can go well so absolutely fantastic to do it under like Michael Quinney a guy like him and are you aware that there's a holiday up for grabs for best in show no <laughs> <laughs> well apparently there is so um, we'll wish you the best of luck for Sunday now turning to Pam Blay now in that group um, in fact let's turn to Windsor as a general show as a championship show it does attract a lot of foreign dogs and there was quite a few in that pastoral group yeah it's quite near to the tunnel really you see they've only got to go M20 M25 and they're here and it's well known for being an international show they have their special room where the international people can go they're made very well Welcome, and to get so many shortlisted and placed in the group, we had Denmark, the Hungarian Puli came forth, that's winning its third ticket. It won a ticket here last year, and its first ticket was a cross in 10. So that's made up today. We had a dog from Denmark, we had a dog from Belgium, and of course, Tiffany, they all forget, is out of an imported dog. Very international flavour. Absolutely international. Now, Michael, working group was first. It's been very hot and humid today. Did you think any of the dogs suffered as a result of the weather conditions? I felt one or two uh, were lethargic, but I don't think it was the heat. I think it's how they wanted to be and their mentality. Do you find it difficult to do a shortlist in the working group? No, not at all. I found what I wanted. Placing, I just had to think about it because they were rather nice. And the one that topped the group was the Doberman. So, your thoughts on that? There's a lovely story to that. Do you want to hear it or not? Yeah, absolutely. If you cut it, I won't speak to you again. <laughs> <coughs> when I judged him some years ago, I gave his brother the reserve certificate and put the dog today second to him. The brother, of course, was better on the day, more mature, but I've never judged him since. And today, not only uh, no CCs, but I mean, I gave him the group. He is a wonderful quality dog. And moving on to the pastoral group, what did you make of this group? Well, I, I, I felt that could have been stronger. It was where I noticed one or two that, um, 
you know, were, I, I'll say lethargic. I'm not going to say heat because all this nonsense. I mean, mine choose a pug dogs. They choose to sleep in the sun. I felt one or two there were not feeling the heat. They were just not enjoying being a show dog. And again, was it difficult to pick a short list out of those? No, not really, no. There were several dogs in there that I caught my eye immediately and uh, the winner, I thought, was obviously the best one there. What caught your eye about this one? Well, her great movement at the back. Uh, they're a breed that has been over here a long time and I've known them for many, many years. I put that dog's American ancestor up years ago and, of course, bless her heart, she said it's the best that she's had. But I cheeked her and said, no, the best at this time, probably, but it is a very good one. It's the right size, construction, colour and coat. And if you look at the back action, it is superb. So here's your chance. Let's hear it for the English setter. Two, one, eight, three. Judged here by John Barber. Two, one, eight, three, the English setter dog. The German wirehead pointer, judged by Doreen Smiley. Two, two, six, seven, the German wirehead pointer. Jeff Hargreaves selection, the Hungarian Fischler. Two three nine three. Two three nine three. The Hungarian Vishla dog, the large Munsterlander, sent through by Colin Woodward. The dog two seven five zero. Two seven five zero. The large Munsterlander. Another one sent through by Doreen Smiley, the pointer. The bitch, 2838. The Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever, sent through by David Hutchinson. Another dog, 3382. The English Springer Spaniel, sent through by David Moss. 3646, the dog. 3646, the dog. Martin Ford's choice in Irish Water Spaniels. Another dog, 3704. The Irish Water Spaniel. The Welsh Springer Spaniel. 3822. Sent through by Tom Graham, the Welsh Springer. The Bimer Armour. Mario Model selection. 3919, another dog. The Bimarana. It's day two of Windsor Championship Dog Show, and I'm delighted to be joined by none other than Love Actually star, Martine McCutcheon. Hello. Now, hello. Thanks for joining us, Martine. Now, oh, pleasure. what brings you to Windsor? OK, it's all a bit of an accident, a happy accident. But basically, um, I bought another American Spaniel um, called Harry. Um, and then uh, the breeder, Ann Miller, um, said that she had another little dog for sale, and I fell in love with him. This is Fred. Um, also known as Alchemedus Meet Joe Black. And uh, it was my first dog show, and he went in today and he qualified for Crofts. <laughs> oh, so I'm yeah. really happy. No way. Did you take him in at all? No, I didn't take him in. I left it to Anne, I left it to the experts. But um, it was absolutely brilliant, and I just felt so proud of him. And do you think that uh, further down the line that you might actually step into the ring yourself? Maybe. If, if Anne can, can teach me a thing or two, then I'll think about it for sure. <laughs> but uh, for now, I'll stick with the acting. <laughs> and what's uh, Fred like to live with at home then? He's spoilt rotten. <laughs> he sleeps on the bed. He's my little prince. Um, and he's had enough. <laughs> D, D the dog. D the dog. D the dog. Now, did you have any preconceptions about coming to a dog show? Um, all I kept thinking of was that funny film, Best in Show, is it? Um, where everybody was a bit barking mad, excuse the pun. But I've met some amazing people, all been very kind, very lovely, and really supportive. It's been a really nice thing. I think I've got a bit of a bit of a taste for it now. <laughs> so what they say in the dog show world is that once you're sort of bitten by the bug, um, you kind of carry on showing and that's it forever. Do you think that might be you? I don't know. <laughs> I've, got, I've got no idea. I, first and foremost, I loved the dog. 
Um, the breeders love their dogs and that was what was most important to me was that the dogs were looked after and loved and if he ends up being a champion in somebody else's eyes that's fine but you know genuinely it sounds a bit naff but he, already to me he's, he's my number one baby <laughs> and that's it. Well thank you so much for joining us Martin we hope we see you at more championship shows. Thank you so much it's been a pleasure thanks. And the winner of the gun dog group Windsor 2012 is the Welsh Springer Spaniel. In second spot is the Bimarana. In third, the English Springer Spaniel. And in fourth, the Pointer. Thank you very much to the other six shortlisted dogs. So now we have the third dog to make it through to the final lineup, the winner of the Gundog Group, Windsor 2012, the Welsh Springer Spaniel. So Anne Moss's choice for the winner of the Gundog Group here at Windsor Championship Dog Show 2012 was the Welsh Springer Spaniel. I'm delighted to be joined by her now. Anne, that was your second group. Yes. Um, what did you think of the quality today? I thought the quality was exceptional in some of the breeds. Yeah. Um, Obviously, the, the short list, um, I thought that they were extremely good. The Welsh Springer obviously caught my eyes. He's, it, it's, he's an exceptional dog, I think. He's extremely well constructed and he moved very well. And he just showed himself off. Thank you for joining us, Anne. Now, we are joined by John and Greg, the Welsh Springer Spaniel. Now, John, you have won Best in Show with a gun dog at Crufts before. Yes. How does a Group 1 at Windsor compare? Oh, it's still you know up there with whatever win you get, with, a, especially winning a gun dog group, the strong group, so yeah, it's still delightful. It's his first group today, so he's just a youngish dog. And do you think he's in his prime now, perhaps? Yes, he's just starting to. He's, his coat's just coming, bodies, he's just coming up to two and a half now, so he's just coming into his prime. He's a bit like Yogi in the fact that he, you know, he does what you want him to do, he's laid back, he's never a bit of bother and he's easy to live with. And of course Yogi the Hungarian visitor yes. that you won best in show at Crossway. That's right, yes, yes, you know, the special dog. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very, actually, very particularly strong group that we have to say. The shortlist particularly, I mean we had five group winners in there, two of which won one at Baldy Union, won one at um, SKC, but more importantly there was a Hungarian visitor. We don't often see them come through to the top awards, obviously apart from Yogi, but we did have another one in there that has won 12 field awards, which is fantastic, one of which is an open winner. So it's got more than three tickets. It just needs one more open stake win, and it would be the first for a long, long time of a, of a field trial champion. And he's actually a son of Yogi that we were discussing earlier. He's got lots of children out there, and they're all doing very well. But the good thing about this, Yogi can win best in show at, say, Crafts, but there again, they can go out in the field work. Well, first of all, could I just say, ladies and gentlemen, please don't believe everything that you've heard about me because the truth is definitely much worse. <laughs> and this lady moved in with a rough collie and I thought that that dog was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen. let this bitch out and Pat just went <gasps> and I said you shut up I said we haven't got her <laughs> I, I said we haven't got her in the car yet <laughs> shut up. she's doing the standards anyway uh, Lily goes in and she said um, Miss Turner Miss Turner lacquer is prohibited here in the States so Lily said it is a tome and all I've not put one up with lacquer in it air well she had a little 10 inch toy and its top knot was about here, I guess. And when it moved, it was pulling it to the side. It was like leaning over.
And she let these two bitches out in the paddock, and Steve was standing there, and it was another do like at Atkinson's with Pat. Steve said to me, oh, look at that, he said. What I'd give to own a bitch like that. I said, you'd be quiet. I said, that's not the champion. <laughs> And Alan said, what do you think? I said, oh, yes, I'll have her. And as soon as I said I'd have her, Alan shook hands with me. And he turned to Steve. He said, there's no offence here. He said, I'm not selling this bitch to you. I'm selling it to Derek. As... Uh, this is ridiculous. No, no, no. As no. a lifelong friend and a pensioner. <laughs> so, so I said, oh, right. And he charged me two hundred pounds. Good lord! For that bit, we made her a champion, and she produced us three champions. Stephen Seymour. Five eight double eight, the Italian Greyhound sent through by Peter Jolly. The Loucher, six zero double four, sent through by Sandy Stewart. The Papillon, six two three six. Glen Robb's selection. And the Pekingese, 6262, two. Leonie Rolf Hazels. Choice to send through to the group tonight. The Pomeranian, 6302, selected by Andrea Schemmel. The Bichon Frise, Tamara Dawson's choice by 309. The winner of the Toy Group, Windsor 2012, is the Pug. 6325. In second spot, the Griffon Bruxellois. In third, the Italian Greyhound. And in fourth, the Bichon Frise. Thank you so much to the other four. Well done. So now we have another panelist, and look at that pug taking the liberty there. The pug is the winner of the toy group, Windsor 2012. Well done. Well done to the Griffon, the Italian Greyhound, and the Bichon Frise. So the winners of the toy group is the Pug. This is Mac, owned by Stacey and Louise. <laughs> now, just tell us a little bit about yourself, girls. Um, well, Louise is actually the one that does most of the showing, but unfortunately he didn't have a connection with her. So uh, I stepped in and started showing him, which is unfortunate because I would have liked Louise to have been the one who did, did this with him, but, you know. And this is not the first time that you've done well in group this year, is it? No, he did really well at Crufts. He got a group two there. And last year, a year, he also got another group two and a group four. But this is the first group one, so. And how does he like to show in there? Was he showing his socks off? He very much likes to show. It's been his passion since he was a baby. So it was a, a clear choice very early on. This, is our, this was our first litter that we've ever bred. And uh, he was a very, very clear choice from the outset. And do you get nervous when you watch her in there? Yes. <laughs> for many, we've been showing now for six years. And uh, uh, for six years, she's always criticised me at the side of the ring. So it's nice to change. Uh... <laughs> You'll be able to put it back. Yeah. That's right, yeah. So the Bassey Griffon Vaudian Petit 4127 sent through by Brian Ballon. <laughs> and 
and the Beagle sent through by Jim Woodcock for 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And Diana Dixon's choice in the Bloodhounds for double three two. The miniature long-haired Dachshund sent through by Dr. Ron James, double four six nine. Wendy Sharman's selection, the finish spits for seven, double three. Graham Hill's selection in the Hamiltons for double seven, six. The Irish Wolfhound sent through by Ollie Gard for 803 the bitch. And the last of the eight shortlisted dogs, Jan Payne's Whip It. 5109. So, can we have the balls into position? The winner of the Hound Group, Windsor 2012, is the Bassey Griffon Vendien Petit. In second spot, it's the Whippet. In third spot, it's the Beagle. And in fourth spot, it's the Hamilton Stirrer. Well done. The Basset Griffel, Bondien Petit, the Whippet, the Beagle and the Hamilton. Topping the hound group for the 16th time is Jilly, the Petit Basset Griffon Vendion. Today, handled by Gavin Robertson, it's been a phenomenal year for you. Yeah, it is truly incredible. I mean, she's won eight groups last year and eight groups again this year already. It's just you have to pinch yourself every time because you think surely not and yeah, she does it again so really really good win really pleased how are you keeping her in this sort of condition well she's a very active dog at home yeah we're fortunate we've got a lot of land so she runs around but i purposely take her out and i do between four and a half and five miles every day with her road walking to keep her in tip-top condition so keeps me slim and keeps her <laughs> fit so <laughs> best of both so she gets special treatment then um she's treated like the rest but you know, with feeding and playing with them, it's just that bit more sort of exercise just to keep her in tip-top condition, so, and to keep her energy levels up for showing every week, so, yeah, she enjoys it, though. Well, this special dog's going through to Best in Show on Sunday. You'll be back tomorrow, and yep. we'll see you then. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, on day three, the toy group was judged in the Best in Show ring first, and Michael Quinney took charge of that. Was there a nice selection of dogs in there for there you? There certainly was. In fact, all the groups, I've had a nice selection of dogs. Today, I felt very comfortable with a lot of those dogs. There was one or two that I can't imagine how they got there. And of course, Top Toy went to the pug. What was it like going over it? I know the dog very well. I gave him his second CC. He belongs to comparatively new people in the breed. Very dedicated. He is a very, very good dog. Thank you, Michael. Now, after the toy group came the hound group, and Dagmar, you had the um, honour of taking on in charge of the hound group. And what did you think of your hound group today? It was an exceptionally good hound group. Uh, many quality dogs, very few weak examples. I pulled out eight. I would say those eight could have won under me any time. My winner was a most outstanding Putty Basset Griffon Vondine. She has won before. I have judged her mother. And my first react my only reaction is her mother was a top winning dog. This bitch is better. She is a perfect show dog in addition to being a very wonderful example of the breed. So Pam, Toys and Hounds on day three. The toy group was up first. Your thoughts? I thought it was an interesting group. 
Our favourite uh, Bichon that's been doing quite well got Group 3 last week at Blackpool in all that terrible weather. The Griffon was interesting. That's the first one since the war that's a smooth coat. It's fantastic to see that actually get a brute placing. So moving on to the Hound Group, um, obviously the winner is very well known to viewers of Around the Dog World, Jilly, the Petit Basset Griffon Bondion. Um, but then there was a bit of a favourite in there for me, the Group 3 Beagle. Yeah, well, of course, the great thing about that, it came over for Crufts. First show, won the reserve ticket, which is fantastic in an entry that Beagles would get. It's gone on to seven shows and it's got seven tickets, so I think that's pretty special. And it's also good as well because it's a tan and white, and you actually don't see many tan and whites doing well in the group. No, no. And it looks fantastic. It's a show dog, so he could do some good for the country here. So let's hear it for the Akita, sent through by Jenny Killerly. Seven, double, four, two. The Boston Terrier, sent through by Rob Sanson. Seven, four, nine, six. The Tibetan Terrier, sent through by David Roberts. Eight, four, seven, one. The Tibetan Spaniel, sent through by Jane Lilly, 8418. And the Shih Tzu, sent through by Carla Savage, 8340. The Standard Pool, Ken Jessup, selection from the breed, 8159. The Toy Poodle, Jackie Hurley selection, 8179. And the Dalmatian, the choice of Patricia Dixon, 7693. Michael Smaley's decision, the winner of the utility group is the Toy Poodle. In second spot, it's the Tibetan Terrier, 8471. And in third, the Dalmatian, 7693. And in fourth spot, the Akita, 7442. Well done to the other four remaining shortlisted dogs. Give them a round as they leave the ring. Thank you. So let's hear it for the winner of the utility group, Windsor 2012, the Toy Poodle, the Tibetan Terrier, the Dalmatian and the Akita. And a big thank you to Michael Quinney and Chris Seidler. Graham, the Toy Poodle is this year's utility group winner at Windsor. Lee Cox, your handling, was it a good win for you? Yeah, fabulous, absolutely fabulous. I mean, he really pulled out the stops there. Um, he's having a great year so far. I cannot ask any more of this dog. So, yeah, he's, he's really is. It was fabulous. Crowd's really behind you today as well. I know, it's fabulous, isn't it? I make the most of it. <laughs> you never know when that's going to stop. <laughs> absolutely. You've only got a few more minutes, sort of maybe about another hour until you invest in show. Any last minute preparations? No, I'm just going to let him have a rest, have a drink, maybe cock his leg, just chill out, and so that he's going to be coming back and hopefully put on the same performance that he did just then. the new chairman was sat in the audience tonight? Yes. What would you ask him? To care. To care about us a bit more. To remember that the Kennel Club is supposed to be for the furtherance of pedigree dogs and we are pedigree dogs. Um, I want them to care about us. I want them to share our interests. I want them to stop caring about the RSPCA and care about us. I remember once Edna gave me a bitch that I was very thrilled with, and Olive said, where did you get that from? 
And I said, Mrs. Harold gave it to me. I think she did. She couldn't have sold the damn thing, could she? <laughs> <laughs> and then Ollie gave me a bitch that I thought was lovely, and Edna said, well, make sure you showed him long grass with feet like that. <laughs> They stop my life effectively for mistakes. I see myself as the judge that was banned. So we have 11 shortlisted dogs here. Michael must think this is a good, strong group to shortlist 11. And the first to go again is the Kerry Blue. Let's hear it for the Kerry Blue. Frank Kane's choice, 8549. The West Highland White Terrier, sent through to the group by Julie Coley. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Martin Phillips selection. 7306. The Sky Terrier, judged by Richard Allen, 7187. The Scottish Terrier, chosen by Jack Watson, 7177. The Norwich Terrier, Trisha Gray selection, 7060. The Smooth Fox Terrier, sent through to the group by Max King, 6903. Jackie Shaw selection, the Dandy Dimmock Terrier, 6866. The choice of Carolyn Lambert from the Bull Terriers, 6790. The Border Terrier, Kevin Holmes' choice, 6645. Another one sent through by Richard Allen. The Australian Terrier, 6569. The winner is the Kerry Blue. In second spot, the Scottish Terrier. In third, the Norwich Terrier. And in fourth, the Bull Terrier. Thank you to the others as they leave the ring. Well done to the Kerry Blue, the Scottish Terrier, the Norwich Terrier, and the Bull Terrier. Topping the Terrier group at Windsor 2012 is the Kerry Blue Terrier, who's called Buster. This is Phil Davis, who's handling him. He's co-owner and breeder. Now, Phil, good win for you? Oh, it's a magic win. I mean, Windsor's a great show, and I think anybody that shows dogs would like to win a group at, at Windsor. And I've been lucky enough to win two groups in, in two years. He's top carry as well? Yeah, he's currently top carry. He's in the top five terriers uh, in the UK at the moment. Did you feel it was a tough group to top? Yeah, I think the terrier group's been one of the strongest groups this year. From day one of the working group, the Doberman. The Australian Shepherd. The Welsh Springer Spaniel. The pug that topped the toy group. The Basset Griffon Vendien Petit. The toy poodle. The Kerry Blue Terrier. The Welshie was recognised by the Kennel Club in 1902. 
His original purpose was to spring or start game into flight, and this he can do with amazing success. Let's hear it for the Welsh Springer Spaniel. One more time as the Welshie goes round, let's hear it for the Welshie that topped the 31 Gundog Breeds here on Friday. A scent hound bred to trail hares in the bramble-filled terrain of the Vondy region of France. The Basset Griffon Vendien Petit. topping 1,000 dogs and 19 breeds. Developed in the mid to late 19th century in Germany by Carl Louis, Carl Frederick Louis Doberman, a tax collector. He needed a dog not only to protect him, but a dog who would encourage slow payers. The working group winner, Windsor 2012. Topping 24 breeds. In the pastoral group, the Australian Shepherd. 1071 sent through the breed by Lynn Salt. Beating 1,043 entries. Australian by name, but actually developed on the ranches of the US of A. Highly successful search and rescue dogs, the Australian Shepherd. Michael's choice in the toy group was the pug. The first of the groups judged on day three. The pug topped 1,273 toys to take the group, sent through the breed by Gail Saffa. Pugs are Chinese in origin, popularized in Europe by the House of Orange in the Netherlands and the House of Stuart here in the UK. Famous, uh, famous owners include Napoleon and Josephine. So the winner of today's first group to be judged, another judged by Michael, the Toy Poodle, topping the utility group, 8179, sent through by Jackie Hurley, beating 1,154 utility entries, the smallest of the poodle varieties, but a huge personality, originally from Germany, as I said earlier, Let's hear it for the Toy Poodle. As you saw, just a few moments ago, topping 899 Terriers, the Kerry Blue 8549, sent through to Michael by Frank Kane. Coming from the, from the Emerald Isle and the county of Cork and Kerry, the breed has been used on the farm as well as police dog, military dog, dog with real attitude. Here they go. This is your chance. Let's hear it. The Doberman, the Australian Shepherd, the Welsh Springer, the PBGV, the Toy Poodle, Perry Blue, and the Pug. How exciting. Seven wonderful dogs. The winner of Best in Show, Windsor 2012, is a toy poodle. The winner of the utility group. Congratulations. Reserve Best in Show, the Kerry Blue. Both of which are now, so best opposite sex. Michael's very definitely going for the PBGV for best opposite sex in show. Congratulations to the pub. Congratulations to the Welsh Springer, the Australian Shepherd and the Doberman, but huge congratulations to the Toy Poodle, the Kerry Blue and the PBGB. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause as they go round the ring. Best in show, Windsor 2012, the Toy Poodle, Reserve Best in show, the Kerry Blue and Best Opposite Sex. 
the Bate Griffon, Vondi and Petit. Well done to you three. Taking his fifth best in show, best in show for Windsor 2012 is Graham, the toy poodle. Lee, you must be delighted. You've won a holiday as well. I know. I didn't realise that. How fabulous is that? And to France as well. Oh, my God, I'm going to be fatter. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly strong lineup as well, I think. It was a beautiful lineup. I'm speechless, and it's not often that I am, but I'm just thrilled. I'm thrilled. Of course, um, Jilly was in there, the PBGV, who's yep. sort of running for top dog, you mm. know. Um, Graham must be up there now, running for top dog too. I don't know, because I'm hopeless at things like that. You know, you have to ask me five times how, what, what winnings he's actually done. Um, so, I, with regards to his points, I'm not sure how close or far or whatever he is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he's had a fabulous year, so he, might, he must have a few. And for those people watching at home that perhaps would like to get a toy poodle and show it, um, any tips for them? <laughs> try it they are the most fabulous fabulous breed and people get frightened because of the hair but no they are the most fabulous fabulous breed they are fabulous pets good all around fabulous and you know if you want a toy poodle have a toy poodle they've got a bit of a reputation by from some but they're not they're just wonderful so if you want one go and get one thank you so much and many congratulations thank you my love thank you very much so the utility group winner was the toy poodle and the Terrier group winner was the Kerry Blue Terrier. Now, Mr. Michael Quinney, you were the judge of both those groups, and then you judged Best in Show, and you must have thought very highly of those two because you then put them all the way. Not only those two, but I think it's possibly. I've never had the privilege of doing all the groups by two before, so they were my own dogs by two. Um, and, of course, the Von Dean I've given major awards to. <clears throat> I had to think about it really very much indeed, and I just felt the final choice was something I've admired tremendously, the runner-up, and I thought he just was a bit reluctant on the final move, but I thought the little poodle never stopped once, and that's how I made it. So as you can see behind me, the showground has all been packed away for another Windsor 2012. But Pam Blay, just a final word from you for Best in Show and Reserve Best in Show, and of course the puppies as well. What were your thoughts? I thought it was a cracking lineup. Well, there you are, Graham, number five Best in Show. He's just, as I said to you earlier on, he's just unstoppable at the moment. He just absolutely gets in that ring and he just owns it, is his. Reserve the Kerry again. A bit unlucky, you know, he's, he's hitting the door, but he's just not quite going through the door. Puppy's excellent, you've got the beagle, very, very pretty, very nice, very nice. Followed by the American Cocker. So your favourite's there and my gun dog's there, so we're all right. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Pam, for that. Our favourites did get through in the end, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations to our Best in Show winners and thank you for watching Around the Dog World. We will see you next time at the Hound Show where we'll be taking a closer look at some of the group's glorious breeds.